What's up internet? I'm Kyle and in this week's Python program tutorial we're learning about all kinds of really awesome utilities that are built into Python that you can use to your advantage as a programmer. Python has a lot of really cool control structures, objects, etc. All kinds of stuff that you can use to program and you can live a long and happy successful career as a Python programmer without having to use any of the extra stuff. However, we are going to learn about the extra stuff today because it's what makes your Python programs that much more awesome. And today we're learning about specifically four different utilities, functions, and objects that are really, really unique to Python uh, that are just really special. Those being the sort algorithm, the lambda notation, the none type, and lastly, hold on, I forgot what it was, the list comprehension. So let's dive in and get to it. The very first inbuilt Python function that I want to go over is the sort function, which as you can probably guess, takes in some input and sorts it in terms of uh, some kind of order. So if it's numbers, it puts them in ascending numerical order. If it's letters, it puts them in alphabetical order. So let's say, for example, I have this array called messy array, which has a whole bunch of different integers in some random order. What I can do is I can call uh, messy array, which is the name of my array, dot sort. So messy array is my class, and sort is a method that's inherent to that. And now after I do that, when I print messy array again, you will find that messy array is now in perfect ascending numerical order. As I briefly mentioned, this can also put things in alphabetical order. So as you can see here, my words array has a whole bunch of different words in the form of strings in no particular order. I can call words.sort, which is a method on the words array. Then when I print words again, now all of my words are arranged in alphabetic order from A to Z. Words has a few inputs, so if you hover over the sort function, you can see two possible arguments are key and reverse. So I'll go over reverse first because that one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, that is just simply you can pass in a true or false as a boolean. So type in reverse equals, and if you want it to reverse, uh, you type in true. If you don't want it to reverse, you want standard order. Uh, as you saw before, you don't have to do anything. So now when I call this again, uh, instead it'll print all of my words in reverse alphabetic order from Z to A. Now let's try using that key argument. Key is useful for sorting more complicated data types. So for example, I now have an array called tuple list, which is a, an array where each element is a tuple with a number in the first index and a word in the second index. And they're all in no particular order and not even the numbers and the words have anything to do with each other. So if I automatically call tuple list.sort um, what that does is it automatically assumes you want to sort by the first element in the tuple. So you can see that it prints uh, the, the list now in ascending order by number, by the first element. However, I can use the key, um, the key argument to sort by another element in the tuple. Like for example, if I wanted to sort by uh, all of the words and ignore the numbers, what I can do is I can use the key argument to do that. And the way you would program that is you'd use the lambda notation, which I promise I'm about to go over in just a second. So a key equals lambda um, and give it some kind of name, uh, tuple, and then you want to sort by tuple one. So what this means in less fancy talk is uh, lambda is how you define a function in place. Tuple is just a symbolic name for each tuple as we go through our list and we're telling it we want uh, tuple index into one, meaning we want the second element of our tuple to be sorted. So then, now when we try that out, instead you can see that it has ignored the numbers and it has sorted the, tu the tuples in alphabetical order according to the words that were in that second element. One final remark I have about the inbuilt sort algorithm is that if you ever need to sort anything at all, always use Python's sort algorithm. The reason being is because it is the fastest sorting algorithm you can use in Python. So you could win the Fields Medal inventing some world's fastest computer science sorting algorithm, and it will never be faster than Python sort. The reason being is because uh, this is built into Python, and when Python uses it, it knows it can use cer certain shortcuts when it's sorting that would make it faster than anything else. So until your Fields Medal winning algorithm gets built into Python, uh, Python's inbuilt sort is going to be faster so always use that one so the next built-in Python function that I want to go over as promised is this lambda function so let's clear this out and I'll show you how to use lambda so what lambda is is it's a way that you can define simple functions in place 
and a lambda can take any number of arguments but it's only one expression which is why it's uh, simple and you can use it uh, most easily for math expressions so let's say I had some function uh, we'll call it x equals and then you want to write the lambda keyword and this is where you give it the inputs so let's say I have one input which is a and then you separate the inputs from the expression with a colon like this and then you tell it what you actually want it to do so I'll have a function that adds uh, 10 to a so then when I go to print um, x which is my function and I'll give it an input of say 4 I print that and it does the lambda operation and prints 14 so what it does is I passed in uh, this value of 4 into x and that became the argument a and it added 10 to that and it gave me back a 14 and as I mentioned before you can have any number of arguments that you want so I'll do a b c and you can make uh, a slightly more complex expression uh, but it has to always be uh, one expression so if I wanted to do a times b minus c and then down here I'll give it a few more so I'll make b equal to 3 and then c equal to 2 and I can print that out and uh, then it will spit out 10 for me because 4 times 3 is 12 minus 2 is 10 and uh, that is um, that's pretty much how the lambda function works and as you saw before I was using the uh, lambda function in my sort algorithm so I'll show you again what that looked like so I defined a lambda here where uh, when it searches for the key the argument is the tuple so it's each tuple as we walk down uh, when we're sorting and then the expression is the tuple index into the second uh, index there so tuple with the one and that's how I use the lambda in the context of the sort algorithm the next thing I want to talk about it is not necessarily a function but rather a unique data type that's built into Python so if I type in the word none with a capital N you can see that it changes color to show that Python recognizes it as something special and what this is is this is its own data type it is the none type data type so just like we have things like arrays and dictionaries and integers those are all data types none is also a data type in Python so what exactly does none do well it's actually nothing uh, the whole purpose of a none type is to give you one other data type that isn't anything else um, so you can easily recognize uh, none type data types uh, when, when they come up like it's very it may, might seem abstract or maybe even useless at this point, but I promise that once you get uh, knee deep into Python programming, you start to realize just how powerful it is to have this kind of data type. Again, this is a, a data type that is just not any other type of data type. So for example, if I make a, a function uh, f, right, and uh, we'll just do something, and it'll uh, just return um, a so it gives an in it gets an input a and it just returns a so if I want to print f of 7 it should go right ahead and print 7 so it prints an integer data type which is exactly what we would expect because we told it to return uh, that value of a however if we just wanted to print um, f without the argument so this is a function now so it doesn't actually return any uh, anything because we didn't give it anything we see it returns a function object however now when we uh, remove this return statement we just or we don't re remove the return statement but we return a from the we remove a from the return and then we try to do that it returns none and this indicates to us that the function is actually not supposed to return anything uh, but there is a return statement in there that makes it go back to the normal flow of the program so that's an instance where you might see none and there are plenty of other instances where you might uh, find yourself using the none data type because it is actually extremely powerful this leads me into the discussion of the last inbuilt function I want to talk about which is the list comprehension so let's say you're writing a program and you want to start with an array of all none types of a certain length so you want an array of length 10 and they're all none types uh, because you're using the nuns as a placeholder and you want to overwrite them later in the program but you want them all to be their own object in memory this is one way you might think of doing it so you declare an empty array and then you have an iteration so you go over the entire range of 10 and for each one of those you append a none and this quite frankly it does work it does give us an array of length 10 that are all nuns and then we can also reassign any anything that we want so if we want array of 5 equal to 8 and then we want to print the array again 
you can see that we were able to reassign, reassign one of those uh, indices to an 8 and all the others are independent locations of memory. So this is all great and dandy. However, there is actually a better way to do this uh, using Python's built-in feature called a list comprehension. So instead of doing this for loop, what we can do is we can condense all of this into one line of code. So instead we can initialize an array uh, like so. So to write a list comprehension, you start with these square brackets that you would normally use to create a list. And then the very first thing you do is you write what you want it to return in each of the indices. So I want it to put none in each index. And then you write the iterator. So for i in range 10. And you can see how we just took exactly what we had before, but now it is condensed into one line. And if we want to run that again, we get exactly the same result. We just made an array of length 10 with all nuns and all of the nuns are independent locations in memory so we can reassign one of them individually. So this is pretty awesome. But not only does this have the advantage of being simpler because it takes up one line of code and makes everything easier to read, it's also faster than using the other iterative method that we had with the loop and stuff. The reason being, and this goes back to what I said about the sort algorithm, the Python uh, interpreter recognizes this as a list comprehension and it, because it's something it knows, it can take certain shortcuts to arrive at the same result much faster. And that's why it is preferred to use a list comprehension over a, a simple for loop. And this list comprehension is, um, using list comprehensions is one of the hallmarks of an experienced programmer. So this is one of those things that would separate an experienced programmer from a novice. Let's do something a little bit more interesting with the list comprehension, because it's such a powerful tool. So for example, instead of uh, printing all nuns, if I wanted to make uh, ascending integers in an array. All I have to do is change that to the iteration variable and we can see we've made an array of length 10 of all of the ascending integers. But what's even cooler than that is we can combine the lambda function which we just learned about with this. So if I make a function called g uh, using the lambda keyword and I give it uh, a few different inputs so a, b, and uh, c and then I, I'll make it some kind of simple expression so a to the power of b uh, plus c, okay? And then what I can do is inside here, which is, remember this is what gets returned in each index, I can make this g, and we can do something more interesting, and I can give it an a value, so if I make this 2, uh, b, I can make i, for example, so I can use my iterator, and c, I can add 3 each time. Then, when we go to print that, we get something that's uh, much more interesting. And really the sky is the limit when you can insert functions into list comprehensions because you can make all kinds of uh, really interesting data, pretty much anything you would ever need to think. And you can do it efficiently in one line of code and very quickly. Thank you for watching my tutorial this week. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my book. It's called Building Smart Lego Mindstorms EV3 Robots and it's now available on Amazon. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel to get more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, leave it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.